Hey folks, Johnny here, Tennessee Mountain Bees. We're back out in the woods today and I wanted to share another amazing tree species with you, the amazing black willow. Stick around to the end, I want to tell you how to get some of these for free. Okay folks, here we've got a black willow, Salix nigra. This is another very important tree for our honeybees, an early nectar source and an early pollen source. Uh, this, this tree is very, very hardy tree given the right conditions. As you can see here, we're in an area that's a swampy area. Uh, it's a little creek here that's fed by a couple of springs just upstream. And this stays wet all the time, which is what uh, Black Willow really loves. The uh, Salix genus has over 90 species of, uh, of trees and shrubs in North America, and there's over 400 worldwide. It is a dioecious tree, meaning that the uh, male and female flowers will be on separate trees. Uh, the, it blooms early in the spring, about the same times that the leaves come out. And so, as you can see, it's, this one isn't blooming yet. There's several buds. Uh, it's, behind, it's behind red maple. Of course, we, the red maples are just now beginning to bloom out. This has been a very important tree historically, medicinally. Uh, Native Americans and, and people all around the world have used the bark of this tree for thousands of years as a, a general painkiller. Uh, the bark contains salicylic acid, which is the basic component of aspirin. And this was synthesized in the late 1800s and is now pretty much made in the lab and not harvested from the trees anymore. However, it is really a good uh, painkiller for toothaches, uh, headaches, uh, inflammation, fever, and, and so forth. And typically you'll find these growing out in the open and they'll have a lot of branches low. This one's had to compete for sunlight a little bit more here. So there's not a lo lot of low branches. It generally will have more of a more of a shrubby look. Hey, here we've got another one. Uh, Multiflora rose is kind of trying to crowd it, but as you can see, this is a little bit better example. There's a lot of, a lot of limbs lower, a lot of those little fine, really flexible limbs. You can see a few of the, just a very few of those tiny lanceolate leaves that are left over from last fall. Those generally fall off pretty easy. But there'll be some additional stuff added onto this video uh, in the form of a, of a small presentation that will show uh, the leaves and flowers in various stages of development of the tree. I also wanted to show you how to, how to get some of this bark. You just See how this peels off? It peels off real easy. Get down to the cambium layer, about like this. You just chew on it. You swallow the saliva. And I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just saying this is what I'd do if I had pain and couldn't get my hands on any aspirin. It's kind of got a bitter taste. Not as bad as aspirin, though. But again, I'm not telling you to. I'm not telling you to, you to do that. It's just a common, a, a very common method of uh, pain relief for uh, people for thousands of years. And of course, it won't hurt that tree at all where I cut it there. It's very hardy. It'll. It'll scab right over. But hey, thank y'all. Thank y'all for watching my videos. And please, please subscribe if you hadn't already. And uh, hang around a few minutes. We're going to talk about some uh, more fun facts about the uh, willow trees. And as I promised, I'm going to tell you how to get some of these for free. Another important willow species is Salix discolor. This is a shrub willow, also known as pussy willow. They're not uh, native this far south. It's a very common species farther up north, uh, but it's doing really well here. This is uh, one that my wife picked up at a local garden center. And as you can see, it's already beginning to bloom out. I'm really eager to see how, how happy the bees are with it uh, uh, this spring. Okay, folks, we're back again. Let's take a look at some pictures here of the black willow. Black willow, Salix nigra. 
Black willow is a fast growing tree. It really likes uh, full sun. It's you're going to generally find it on wet or moist areas. It's an early colonizer. It comes in early when you have an area that's it's it's cleared up, cleared out. There are over 90 species in the Salix genus that are native to North America and over 400 in the world. Salix nigra is uh, the bark is dark brown to blackish. Commonly called swamp willow due to its prox proximity to, to wet areas, also known as Gooding's willow and Dudley willow. It, Black willow typically flowers in February in the southern part of its range. And uh, later on in the year, as late as June, uh, in the northern parts, many insects visit this tree, but it's pollinated primarily by honeybees. The lifespan of the black willow is approximately 65 years, according to the USDA, but they can live up to 100 years or more. As we'd mentioned earlier, it's uh, another one of those important sources for uh, early pollen and nectar, uh, you know, to stimulate brood rearing, similar to red maple. It's a little bit behind the red maple. The red maples are just now beginning to bloom here. And as you, as you saw earlier, uh, the, the black willows are not yet. The leaves are simple and alternately arranged. They have a lanceolate form and you can see the margins are are very finely serrated. The underside of the leaves are a lighter shade of green. Uh, this species can sometimes be confused with uh, crack willow, which is an invasive species, uh, not native uh, to North America. They look very similar. The crack willow leaves are wider on the underside. Very similar characteristics as far as their benefits to our honeybees though. So in my view, it doesn't make that much a difference. The leaves are three to six inches long. It turns a golden yellow in the fall. It's, as we'd mentioned earlier, it's one of the earliest trees to flower in the spring. It'll, it'll bloom along with the leaves or just after the leaves come out. Black willow is a dioecious species meaning that the male and female flowers are on separate trees. You'll get uh, pollen from your male flowers and uh, nectar from both male and female flowers. And of course, the female flowers will produce the fruit later in the year. The, the fruit is a cone-shaped seed pod and those hang in catkins. When those open up in, in late summer, there's a bunch of little cottony seeds that, that, that come out and, uh, and those are wind dispersed. And I've pers personally witnessed these uh, in the fall deer hunting, bow hunting, and you'll see these cottony seeds floating through the woods, just ever so easy, uh, floating along the wind, just working their way through the trees. It's, it's pretty amazing. They can go long distances. And a little uh, deer hunter tip, uh, you may already know, if you see something like that floating around and circling around, and the wind's going different directions, you might as well go to the house because the deer are going to wind you for sure. Uh, when we look at a range map here, you can see how widely distributed the black willow is. Pretty much half of the North America here, or the half of the United States, um, half of Texas, and then all the way up into Minnesota. We've got some out, uh, out west to California, there, Arizona. I had mentioned uh, that this is a pioneer or early successional species. They will, it'll move into an area early that's been cleared out. These are shade intolerant. They really love full sun and that's how they'll take on that real, real bushy uh, form. They're just trying to uh, maximize their sun gathering ability for photosynthesis. And uh, here's a section out of uh, Frank Chapman Pellet's book from 1920, American Honey Plants, one of the classics. And uh, in regarding willow, he says, in the northern states, the blooming of the pussy willow, Salix discolor, is among the first signs of spring. 
Furnishing as it does almost the first honey of the season, as well as pollen in abundance, it is highly regarded by the beekeepers. And then on down, it says the willows bloom too early in the spring in the northern states for the bees to store surplus from this source. But both nectar and pollen are supplied for early brood rearing. And you can get yourself a free copy of Frank Chapman Pellet's book, along with many, many other beekeeping books that are now in the public domain. Uh, Strathcona Beekeepers Library is an amazing resource for beekeepers. I'll put a link to Strathcona as well as a link to American Honey Plants, the PDF version, in the description of this video uh, for you to download it at your convenience. Black willow is an important species for a variety of different wildlife. As you can see here, we've got several pictures. The rough grouse and the white-throated sparrow are, are a couple of species that are known to eat the uh, buds and the catkins off of the black willow. Uh, the um, yellow-bellied sapsucker likes to harvest the sap from it. The yellow warbler, as, as well as other bird species, choose, like to choose the uh, willow uh, species uh, for nesting sites and it stands to reason because there's a lot of insects that visit the willow species they're they're one of the top species for what's known as or insect herbivory basically meaning a lot of stuff likes to eat it and so since there's so many insects present it, it stands to reason you're going to have a lot of birds coming to uh, to enjoy that bounty as well there's a picture of a beaver here beaver are known to to harvest the limbs of black willow to assist in building their dams. And deer also love to eat these, these young twigs. There are some butterflies that uh, rely on the black willow for their larval stage, particularly the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail, the Red Spotted Purple, and the Viceroy. I told, mentioned a couple times earlier that I was gonna tell you how to get some of these amazing trees for free. There's a, there's a technique called live staking. And what you can do is you can harvest limbs that are about the size of your thumb. And you make two cuts. You make an angled cut on the end that you're going to stick in the ground and then a flat cut near the top. And this needs to kind of be, needs to be close to where there are some buds. And then you push that into the ground in an area where you have moist or wet conditions. You'll get a really high incidence of success uh, with the black willow. It's a very hardy tree and, and it's easy to root. Here, here's a, a, a picture I thought was really neat that shows several buckets of uh, live, live stakes that they're ready to plant. And here's a picture of Ryan Davis, who is a, a Pennsylvania Forest Program Manager. And he's got a great video out there on live staking if, uh, if, you, need, uh, if you would like to, to find out more information about that. We had talked earlier about the salicylic acid that's naturally present in the willow species. And uh, in 1897, Felix Hoffman, a German scientist, was able to synthesize acetyl salicylic acid in its purest form. And then that's how we got aspirin. And then it was in, uh, in, in 1897 or 1899, they came out with a powdered form um, of aspirin. And then I believe it was... 1904, anyway, early 1900s that they got it into the peel form. And it was the bear, the bear company. Well, there you have it, folks. If you didn't uh, think so before, hopefully you agree with me. Black willow is an amazing tree. Lots of beneficial properties of black willow. And so hopefully you uh, enjoyed this and learned something from it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment and subscribe if you hadn't. And, and share this with anybody that you think maybe could uh, benefit from it or, or might be interested. Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. God bless you. God bless your family. And God bless your bees. <laughs>